Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... I'm Thomas Hermstam. I'm the designer of the, the lead designer of the Blade Runner RPG and also have to be the CEO of Free League Publishing. Again, we're talking about uh, Blade Runner, the role-playing game. Uh, congratulations on your success on Kickstarter. Wow, you've you've uh, you've done really well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always a bit nerve-wracking to launch a new campaign, even though we've done a few in the past. But this one was, uh, yeah, it's a lot at stake. So it's, uh, yeah, it feels great that it's it's going well. Let's talk about the Kickstarter. What exactly uh, is Free League trying to uh, put out there? Well, uh, obviously, it's, a, it's an RPG based on the Blade Runner universe. Uh, I mean, primarily the two films, but also other media that has been out there is also kind of part of, of building this universe. And that's what we are tapping into and, and, and contributing to. Uh, and it's a game that will differ a little bit from uh, most of our, our previous 3D games in that it, it focuses more perhaps on investigations and casework uh, more than a bit of a sandbox approach that we've uh, perhaps more known for in the past and and so in this game what's what's what can you be exactly are you are you uh a de- in, in the movies you're the detective looking for the replicants or do you have options to be replicants as well how 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 broad is the scope here so in, at the early outset of developing this game, we decided to have a fairly sharp scope uh, focused uh, approach to the game. And, and we, uh, since we wanted to, to focus on casework and investigations, we uh, made the choice that all characters will be Blade Runners. You will be solving cases as Blade Runners. That is kind of the premise of the game. In the core game, uh, future expansions might do different things. That's that's for a question for another day. But in the core game, that's uh, what you. I mean, the focus of the game are these investigations that you will be playing Blade Runners. But that doesn't necessarily mean you'll just be hunting replicants. Uh, in in this uh, world and this that we're that we're describing and and these cases, they can be about pretty much any case that in one way or another connects to the replicant industry. So that can be a wide range of different uh, uh, cases that that can go far beyond just hunting replicants. It can be anything that kind of in one way or another connects to replicants uh, somehow. And also you can uh, play a replicant yourself uh, as seen in the film Blade Runner 2049 where the main character K is a replicant and a Blade Runner. You can play a character like that because our game is set shortly after Replicants were reintroduced on Earth after having been banned, and they also joined the forces of Blade Runners themselves. And that's also an option for uh, a character in the role playing game. So let's talk about the uh, stretch goals you have here. Uh, Free League tends to be very uh, generous in all the uh, options you can have. Uh, what, what, what it, it looks like there's a starter set. I see dice. Uh, what, what, what is the, uh, the plan exactly? Yeah, we have a bunch of things. I mean, uh, the core uh, offering, I guess, is, is one core rule book and the starter set. And the starter set is it's almost a misnomer because it's, it's yes, it is a starter set in the sense that it has everything you need to get started playing. But it does not mean it's, it's something small and flimsy and something you run just for one evening and then you're done. It's It really has a lot of stuff in it and, and things that you'll be using not just for the introductory scenario. There is a big full uh, size case file scenario in the starter set that you will be playing. You will not be able to finish in a single sitting. It's it's definitely a multi-session thing with a bunch of handouts. I think it's something like 26 handouts or something for, for evidence. There are custom dice. There's a big map of, of uh, Los Angeles in 2037. There is uh, uh, pre-generated characters. There is, uh, yeah, so there's a lot now, especially since we've unlocked quite a few stretch goals that the starter set will uh, will basically be, uh, you know, a treasure trove of, of stuff, scenarios, handouts, condensed rules, everything you need to, to play and you will be able to play for quite some time. But then you have the core rule book that dives deeper into the world and the setting itself. So of course there you, you'll find more detailed information about the game world and the Blade Runner universe, and also uh, lots of um, concrete uh, tools for the game master, the game runner, as we call it in this game, to create their own case files, because that we feel that will probably be something that game masters will be enjoying and, and, and to create their own uh, cases for, for their players to solve. So 
the case rule, the court rule book also has a lot of support for that. So I, I really enjoy the alien book and I, I believe, um, this will have the year zero engine as, as well as the, for the rule system. So I, I have to ask how possible is it to combine these two worlds together? Yeah, we've been asked that quite a bit because, of course, there is this, uh, you know, discussion whether they are the same universe or not and, and so on. And I think I mean, that's a lot of fun. It, it, it's part of, you know, this the joy of, of, of uh, being, you know, experiencing these worlds is also, you know, think about things like that. Uh, from a, you know, technical uh, standpoint they're separate licenses they're not uh, you know our licensing we do happen to make the alien rpg as well but they are completely separate agreements with separate partners so there there is no overlap in sense of of that they're completely standalone separate entities but obviously that does not stop any game runner from making you know any kind of overlap or 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 crossover in their own at their own table i mean that's you know that's part of the fun of being the game master so it creates you know things like that so of course that's entirely allowed and in terms of the game mechanics they're not identical uh, because every freely game uh, we make we really try to adapt we use the same core rules engine something we've now come to call the year zero engine uh, but we adapt it quite heavily to fit the game in question. And so for Alien, we have the stress mechanic, which really focuses us on, on that, like the building of tension and, and, and panic. And, and so that's very much at the core of that game. It has a kind of a pulpy horror space feel. For Blade Runner, which is more focused on uh, the casework, the investigations, and also character development and, and, and that kind of... Uh, focus uh we wanted a game system that is a little bit less intrusive that kind of a bit more melds into the background so we decided on a bit of a different system with fewer dice to take up a little bit less table space and, and mind space for the players so it's it works it's easily enough to convert but it's not identical so it will require some tweaking uh, if you want to kind of you know go from one to the other but uh if you're you know most game masters with some experience would probably be able to to make that if they want to but that's on them technically officially from our side they're two completely separate games so blade runners obviously or um uh probably phil k dick's uh best uh work that's been uh, uh you know been uh, it, it's been that either new comic books or new movies come out from it um why do you think uh i believe the original short story was um uh, uh i dream dreaming of electric sheep uh i'm sure someone on the internet is going to correct me mm -hmm. but, but why do you think that story uh uh, it, it become it's still like it seems like every five years it comes back in prominence we see like new editions of the the movies come out we saw the sequel that come out that they did well and now uh, this uh, this is doing really well this is so there's obviously uh the the, the lore of blade runner is still very strong in pop culture but what, why do you think it's so prevalent yeah it's a good question i mean for me it's it was one of those uh lifelong almost i saw the fil first film uh, i was you know just a young teenager and it kind of i didn't it was quite complex it, it is a you know it's a, it has some you know real deep layers and, and and has this you know existential issues and it's something that very human and even though it's about you know these non-human characters the replicants who are you know artificial but it's still there something about the way they are portrayed and the way they are more human than humans somehow uh, it's 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 endlessly fascinating at least to me and i think to it seems to a bunch of other people as well and it's uh, one of those films and and fictional universes i guess that has just stayed with at least me for for decades and and i think it has a strong pull on on many uh, who who see it and 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 including the new film and, and the other media around that as well that it's uh, it's a fascinating world that is, and it's quite unlike anything out there. It, of course, it's set uh, you know, a precedent for, for a lot of uh, uh, films and otherwise that came out later. But I think it's, it's something about Blade Runner that is just, you know, doesn't let go. At least it's been that way for me. Hmm. So uh, obviously, um, the, this Kickstarter did, is doing very well. Most likely, you may see more books in the far future. And I know it's, it's probably 
this is probably a silly question to ask, being that you're still working on building this right now. But do you think, what do you see, like, if there was another source book down the line, do you think it'd be more of a setting book? Do you think it'd be a more like a, a equipment book? Like, well, how do you see the, the future of the line? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, obviously, and it's something we think about quite a bit. Uh, it is a bit early to say because it's it's where it's it's something we're considering right now, and and we we won't we just don't know yet. So I'd I'd probably rather uh, park that discussion for a later day. Something that we definitely want to do uh, is more case files. Like I mentioned, the first full case file called Electric Dreams is included in the starter set, and that's a fully fledged you know, session, multi-session scenario with a bunch of handouts and, and things. And we want to do more of those and, and uh, possibly also interconnect them to kind of form larger, longer campaigns. So that's something you can definitely expect uh, is uh, more of these uh, case files to play. A difference from the alien RPG is that in those, the cinematic scenarios that we have there, they have pre-generated characters, uh, but considering the nature of alien as a, as a, as a property and, and uh, these uh, characters tend to die quite a bit. That's kind of part of, of, of the fun almost of alien. So the way that's designed is that each new cinematic scenario has new pre-generated characters because you're not entirely, you know, uh, most characters will not make it through uh, alive. Uh, in Blade Runner, it's a bit different since you play Blade Runner's um, solving cases. It it's, uh, opens up for longer narratives, so you can play longer campaigns with the same characters. Uh, so that's uh, a bit of a difference. And that some more case files to play, to play longer campaigns, that's definitely on the horizon. Hmm. I really love that, that you're focusing on the investigation side of it, which I, I, I think that, yeah, the, the, the cyberpunk side of it, it's, it's gorgeous and, and, and very interesting. But at the heart of it is a, it's a detective story. It's a, it's a puzzle. We're trying to figure out maybe not just the crime scene, but also maybe about humanity as well. But, but my next question, um, if I were to run this and you were playing, who would you be? Oh, good question. I'm one of those people who who tend to be the game master all the time, so I, uh, I'm kind of unused to to do that. But yeah, I mean, um, we have a there is a um, obviously we have different archetypes in the game, and we have one that was a stretch goal that was unlocked that is called the the, the city speaker, and that's kind of a cool kind of gaff. If you remember Gaff from the first film, that kind of a character who's kind of knows his way around the street. I think that's a cool type of character. That's a lot of fun to play. So before we wrap up, is there anything about uh, the, the, the Kickstarter and, and the game that you want to share that I haven't asked you about? Good uh, question. I mean, one thing obviously that we have uh, on the list of stretch goals, one is already unlocked and one is on the list of, of uh, goals to come are our virtual tabletop platforms. I think that's an area where we have been moving into quite a bit lately because we feel that uh, is playing online uh, on virtual tabletops, it's here to stay. I don't think it's not going to replace physical, you know, actual playing at a physical table, but I think uh, more and more players will be doing both in different kinds of combinations. And we really want to be where the players are and support that. So I think that's something we've been uh, the on. We have one on the Foundry platform that has already been unlocked, and then we have uh, modules on the Roll20 platform that are on the list of stretch goals uh, coming up. So hopefully. Uh, we'll be able to unlock that one too. And, and that will really, then you have all of the content from the starter set and the rule book uh, at, you know, at just ready to go and uh, already implemented in, in as modules on those platforms, which will help tremendously when you play online, which I think, you know, uh, quite a few people do. So that's something we want to help uh, and support. Excellent, excellent. I, I, I love, I have to say, I love the, the, the look of the dice. I think that's really clever how that was designed. Well. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to talk to us about this Kickstarter. Congra congratulations on the success. And um, to our viewers out there, thank you for watching. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.